Hi, I'm Kayla Heron. I'm Anthony Tyler, and this presentation is going to be an overview of parent management training for oppositional defiant disorder in children. During the presentation, we're going to talk about what oppositional defiant disorder is, what it looks like, some causes and treatments for it, what parent management training is, session breakdowns, and then at the end we'll have resources. Oppositional Defiant Disorder is grouped under the Disruptive Behavior Disorders. The most common behaviors that children and adolescents with ODD show are defiance, spitefulness, hostility, negativity, and verbal aggression. Let's take a look at the DSM criteria. The DSM criteria for Oppositional Defiant Disorder requires a pattern of angry, irritable mood, argumentative, defiant behavior, or vindictiveness lasting at least six months as evidenced by at least four symptoms from any of the following categories and exhibited during interaction with at least one individual who is not a sibling. Angry or irritable mood, argumentative or defiant behavior, vindictiveness. The next section on the slide shows a side note. Um, what this is going over is to just explain that you want to be able to discern whether or not a child is just having some kind of momentary behavior versus something that's actually symptomatic and diagnosable. The requirements mention having to wait at least six months to make sure that what's happening with the child is something that is severe enough for a diagnosis. Getting back to the criteria, the disturbance in behavior is associated with distress in the individual or others in his or her immediate social context or it impacts negatively on social, educational, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. The behaviors do not occur exclusively during the course of a psychotic, substance use, depressive, or bipolar disorder. Also, the criteria are not met for disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. Specified current severity includes three levels of severity. Mild, where symptoms are confined to only one setting. Moderate, where some symptoms are present in at least two settings and severe, where some symptoms are present in three or more settings. Let's take a look at some misconceptions for oppositional defiant disorder. Although in this video we are talking about ODD in children, one common misconception is that it only occurs in children. Right. Another misconception is that oppositional defiant disorder and conduct disorder are the same. That's just not true. Uh, while a child with oppositional defiant disorder may defy rules or authority, they're typically not mild. Another common misconception is that it is always caused by trauma. Although this is not the case, we will talk about causes later on in this video. It's also really common to hear that ODD is a result of bad parenting, and we know this just isn't true. A lot of times people think punishment is the best way to treat ODD. And another one is that it's impossible to treat at all. And again, this just isn't true. 65% of children with ODD who are in some type of intervention or treatment see their symptoms go down within three years or less. Let's see some examples of ODD. Just how 
how common is ODD? There's a range of estimates for how many children and adolescents are actually diagnosed with observational anxiety disorder. Evidence suggests that it's between 1 and 16 percent. However, there's not much information on the prevalence of ODD in preschool or younger ages. Uh, typically, you see ODD occurring in late preschool or early school age children, and while the younger groups are typically boys, it, teen, it tends to even out as they get older. Although the disorder seems to occur more often in lower socioeconomic groups, it affects families of all backgrounds. Now let's examine some possi possible causes of ODD. There are three categories of possible causes. They are biological, physiological, and social. Looking specifically at the biological, this could mean that you have a parent with a history of ADHD, conduct disorder, oppositional defiant disorder, mood disorders, or problems with substance abuse. This could also mean some type of history with a brain chemical imbalance or even poor nutrition. Physiological aspects include a poor or neglectful relationship with the parent, an inability or difficulty to form social relationships or interpret social cues. Finally, looking at social factors, this could mean either poverty, chaotic environment, abuse, neglect, lack of supervision, or just family instability. Now let's look at how you can treat ODD. Let's discuss some treatments for oppositional defiant disorder. Cognitive problem solving skills training helps to reduce inappropriate behaviors by teaching the child positive ways of responding to stressful situations. Children with ODD often only know of negative ways of interpreting and responding to real life situations. Cognitive problem skills training teaches them how to see situations and respond appropriately. Social skills programs and school-based programs that teach children and adolescents how to relate more positively to peers and ways to improve their schoolwork. These therapists are most successful when they are conducted in a natural environment such as the school or in a social group. Medication may be necessary to help control some of the more distressing symptoms of ODD as well as the symptoms of coexisting conditions such as ADHD, anxiety, and mood disorders. However, medication alone is not a treatment of ODD. Finally, a successful treatment for ODD is the program that we're going to be discussing further, parent management training programs and family therapy. This is used to teach parents and other family members how to manage the child's behavior. Parents, family members, and other caregivers are taught techniques and positive reinforcement and ways to discipline more effectively. Let's look more at this type of program. A few goals of treatment include identifying and addressing core problems, first with the parent, later with the parent and the child. Developing parent skills and the child's responsiveness to the parents. Increase the adaptive functioning of a child with ODD. Change the parent-child interactions to be more cooperative. Educate the parent with effective implementation. And to teach specific skills that help to create a more positive, less stressful home environment. Let's look at an overview of what each session will look like. There are typically 12 to 16 weekly sessions that last 45 minutes to an hour. The length of therapy is based on the success of therapy. Sessions 1 through 7 are conducted with the parent of the child only. Session 8 includes the parent and the child to discuss the success of therapy thus far. Session 9 and 10 include only the parents of the child again. And the remaining sessions, 11 through 16, are con conducted with both the parents of the child as well as the child themselves. Each of the sessions in this program should be organized as follows. First, a review of the previous week and how the behavior change program is working at home. Also, any changes that need to be made for a more effective implementation of the programs. Second, a presentation of the principle or theme and how it translates or can be applied to their specific situation. Third, practice and role play of the principles taught during the session. And finally, a take home assignment that applies the principle taught during the session or the changes that were made to the program at the beginning of the session. So each session is going to have a review, a presentation, a role play, and a take home. Before treatment actually begins, we have the pre-treatment introduction and orientation. This session provides an opportunity for the client and therapist to get acquainted. It provides an overview of the program and introduces the par parents to treatment and clinical procedures. It provides an opportunity for the parents to discuss problems and stressors openly. Parents can outline the demands placed on them at the home with the child. 
It provides a scope of the nature of the problem and the parent's understanding or knowledge of how to address the problem. Pre-treatment sessions includes only the parents and the therapist. Parents' skills and consistency of their skills should be assessed during this session. Session one is going to be psychoeducation of oppositional defiant disorder. This is going to look a lot like the first sections of our video, just an overview and an explanation of what it is. This session allows the parent and therapist to pinpoint and define the behaviors that need to be addressed. So what's problematic? Are there any dangerous behaviors and that sort of thing? Behaviors must be observable and must be able to be recorded. Therapists should discuss with the parent how to properly record the behaviors that are being addressed. Second session should focus on the principles of positive reinforcement, including factors that contribute to an effective application of positive reinforcement, and rehearsal or modeling of the application of positive reinforcement should be included in the session. Specific programs are outlined for praise and points that should be provided to the child during the week. A token or point chart can be devised for positive reinforcement with specific behaviors determined. These behaviors should be discussed and defined to the child by the parent before beginning the process at home. Here is an example of two different token charts. The first one is a star chart where the child will receive stickers or a star for the good behavior defined by the parent. The second one is where the child will receive money or even quarters when the child completes the good behavior defined by the parent. For session three, this session provides information to the parent about timeout from reinforcement and how to effectively apply timeout to the child. Role play or modeling of effective timeout is practiced extensively and the use of timeout from reinforcement is planned as homework for the week. Following this, we're gonna show you a video of us role playing this session so that you can see a session breakdown. This is an example of how all of the sessions should look, which would include the review, the presentation, the role play, and the take home. So here is session three for you. Now let's go over an example of how the session will look. I'm gonna to pretend to be the therapist and we have our patient over here on the typical couch, the nice cliche couch. And we're gonna go over an example of a session um, following the positive reinforcement session. So as soon as the patient comes in, this is what it's gonna look like. Hi, last week we talked about positive reinforcement. Do you have any other questions about what we talked about? Actually, yeah, I thought of one. Last week you showed me the star chart and I tried it, but I think my kid might be a little bit too old for stars. He didn't seem to care about earning them. We even tried some superhero stickers and they didn't work either. Remember, we have to find something that he'll want to work for. What's the last thing you remember him wanting to work for? Well, before dropping him off, he was asking for some money for the gumball machine at the supermarket. That's a great example. Do you think he'd work for some money? Perhaps a quarter every day after school that he can save up and maybe buy something at the store? You can either put quarters into a bowl or teach him that a sticker equals a quarter or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that will work much better. Let me know how that goes for you. Today we're going to be talking about timeouts. Now this is the portion where you're going to go into the presentation of the topic. We've covered the review and now we're sliding right into the presentation. We're not going to go over that right now, but so let's pretend we've just done a whole topic of timeouts. Um, after that's completed, we're going to go straight into the role play section. And here's what that would look like. Okay, do you have any questions about timeouts? No, I think I got it. All right, let's try some role play. Pretend I'm your child and I have done a behavior that we are targeting. What would you say? You are in timeout for three minutes. Go to your kitchen chair. Okay, that's really good, but we forgot a step. Don't forget to explain the behavior that they did wrong and the correct behavior you were expecting them to actually do. Let's try one more time. Pretend I just hit my brother because he would not give me back my toy. We do not hit each other when we don't get our way. If he doesn't give you back your toy, you need to come to me and tell me and I will take care of it. Now, go to timeout for three minutes. Perfect. It's also a great strategy to have him role play the same way we are. In that situation, you could have him actually repeat what we have said and before and after the timeout, just for practice. That makes sense. Great. Now let's go over your homework for the week. Right here is where you would introduce the take home and the thing that would allow them to actually practice at home the skills that they just learned. So that would cover the four sections of each session, which is the review, the presentation, the role play, and the take home. Session four teaches the parent about attending and planned ignoring. 
The parents will choose an undesired behavior that they're planning to ignore, as well as a positive alternative behavior that they will specifically attend to. Again, role modeling and practice of planned ignoring to the undesired behavior and attending to the alternative behavior should be done several times throughout the session. Attention and praise for the positive alternative behavior is a key component of this step in therapy. This should be clearly explained to the parent and practiced extensively. During session five, the shaping process is taught to the parent during this session. Parents are trained to develop positive behaviors by using successive approximations of the behavior. They are taught to use prompts and fading of prompts to develop the positive alternative behaviors. Session six begins incorporating the principles discussed during treatment in the school setting. Prior to this session, the therapist and the parent should identify the child's domain of functioning, specific goals, and concrete opportunities that can be implemented at the school. Goals should include targets in academic domains, classroom behaviors, and other tasks such as homework completion. A home-based reinforcement procedure is developed to begin addressing school-related behaviors. As homework, the home-based reinforcement procedure is implemented. During implementation, monitoring of the treatment as well as the development of a concrete school-based reinforcement procedure should be focused on. Including both the parent and the teacher's output, school-based goals should be created and modified as needed. During session seven, any detail from previous sessions that remain ambiguous to the parent are reviewed and practiced. Additional topics to discuss include praise, positive reinforcement, points, and backup reinforcement in order for the therapist to identify how to improve the parent's performance. Any changes that are necessary should be made during this session. It's also important to develop problem-solving methods and introduce them to the parent with the use of first education, then practice of designing programs with a set of hypothetical problems. Session eight is gonna be a family meeting that includes both the parent and the child. Prior to this session, rapport should be built with the child to increase cooperation and compliance. Together with the therapist, they all discuss the success of the programs that have been implemented along with any other problems that have occurred or may occur. Revisions to the program are made to correct problems, misunderstandings, or any facet that may not have been implemented effectively. Play of the programs is conducted to see how to effectively implement the program to identify any necessary revisions. Session nine is back with only the parents and provides education on how to deal with low rate behaviors such as fire setting, stealing, or truancy. Specific contingency programs are developed to help with the low rate behaviors. Typically, this is a punishment procedure that involves completing chores as a consequence to the low rate problem behavior. During session 10, parents are educated on effective ways to reprimand a child. Because parents routinely reprimand children, they are taught how to effectively reprimand the child while combining reprimands for undesired behaviors with positive reinforcement for the desired or pro-social behaviors. The remaining sessions should be conducted with both the parents and the child. For sessions 11 and 12, the parent and the child discuss together ways to negotiate with new behavioral programs and place this in a contractual form. In session 11, negotiating and contracting are introduced and the parent and child practice the negotiation techniques discussed. In session 12, the parents and child practice with each other using problems or issues that occur at home. A contract that will be used as part of the program at home is developed, including input from both the parent and the child. The therapist uses these two sessions to shape the negotiation skills, reinforce compromise, and fades their guidance or prompts as more difficult situations are presented. This image shows an example of a behavioral contract that can be used between the parents and the child at home. The final few sessions should include reviews of the skills or principles learned, any additional practice that's necessary to have effective implementation of the programs or contracts created, and finally termination of the therapy. Material from the previous sessions that remain unclear or ambiguous to the parent or the child should be reviewed and practiced using role play. Additional practice on designing new programs, revising ailing programs, and responding to a complex array of situations in which principles and procedures were previously discussed are reviewed. Therapy can end anywhere between sessions 13 and 16. 
The length of the therapy depends on how much additional support the parent or the child need. Thank you for watching our video. Hopefully, we were able to give you some useful information about ODD. The following few slides will include our references and our resources if you'd like to learn more.